Hi there, my name is Maureen Hatt, and you're watching BC Missions, a nonprofit that promotes Christian ministries, resources, and opportunities for believers to grow in Christ and then expand the family. Today is kind of a cross between an object lesson and a product review. You see, because this product review is actually, you know, gives one of my all time favorite illustrations. So today, you're kind of getting two for one, so stick around. All right, I have a little bit of a confession to make. Um, this object lesson illustration kind of came back to me this last weekend because I participated in a yard sale. And I kind of fell, crashed, however you want to put this, right into the illustration. And it's because we were running around trying to find stuff that we could put outside because our whole town was doing a yard sale. Hey, take advantage of it, right? And I put out a guitar. I put out my very first guitar uh, that's more... I mean, it was more of a toy than I would say an instrument, you know, just kind of teaching you the different um, chord patterns and things like that. But then I was like, you know, I, I've got another guitar that I don't really play very much. It's my second guitar. And I know I can feel the judgment coming through the, the lens here. Uh, if you're a musician, you know there's no such thing as just one guitar. Hit the like button if you, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway. I went to sell my second guitar and I opened it up and you know it was dusty. I hadn't played it in a long time. And I, I realized, oh well, here's probably the reason I don't play it anymore. It's broken. The strings, you know, done. And again, this is not a big problem to fix. I just, you know, I have more than one guitar. So when the string broke and it's nylon, I was like, mm, I'll just I'll put it out there. It's it's probably not worth very much. It's old, it was dusty. I don't really want to try to clean it up. And then it hit me. I was falling straight in to a song from my childhood. Now, the song is from the 70s, but the original uh, reference to this actually comes from 1921. Um, it comes from a poem. And the poem is, from a woman named Myra Welsh. At least I think that's how you say her name. It's spelled M-Y-R-A. And she had a poem titled, The Touch of the Master's Hand. And it was redone. It's been done several times since then, but it was changed into a song, and that's how I'm familiar with it. And the song references a violin, not a guitar, but what I had as a guitar. And I realized I was making the same mistake that the person in the song was making. So if you're not familiar with it, don't worry, don't click off of here, I'm not singing. I'm not singing, you're safe, I promise. But I'm gonna present it to you. Now, I, I don't know the poem very well, but I do know the, the lyrics of the song, and they, they go very close together. The start of the song goes something like this. It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it was hardly worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. Sure isn't much, but it's all we have left. So I guess we ought to sell it too. Who's got a bid for this old violin? Just one more and we'll be through. And then he called, who give me one or who give me two? Two dollars. Who give me three? Four dollars. Just one dollar more to bid on this old violin. Well, the air was hot and the people were standing around as the sun was setting low. But from the back of the crowd, a gray-haired man came forward, and he picked up the bow. He wiped the dust from the old violin, and he tightened up the strings. And then he played out a melody, pure and sweet, sweeter than the angels sang. And when the music stopped, the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, he said, what is the bid for this old violin? And he held it up with a bow. He held it up with a bow and he called, who give me 1,000? Who make it two? 2,000? Let's make it three. 3,000 twice? Now that's a good price. But who's got a bid for me? Well, the people cried out and said, what made a change? We don't understand. The auctioneer stopped and he said with a smile, it was the touch of the master's hand. Now, you know many a man with his life out of tune. He's battered and scarred from sin. So he's auctioned cheap 
to a thankless world, much like the old violin. When the master comes, the foolish crowd, they never understand the worth of a soul from the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. This beautiful illustration is an amazing encouragement to anyone that can identify with the battered and scarred violin. As an adult, I can see my own life in the story. But as a child, I actually always pictured the Apostle Paul when I heard the song. So I'm gonna give you three lessons that we can learn by combining Paul's testimony with the illustration of the violin. The first lesson we see is the damage that sin can do. If we go back and we look at Paul's early ministry when he was called Saul, you'll see that he has a lot in common with that old violin. Just like the, the violin was battered and scarred, so was Saul's testimony. He was known for persecuting the church, for rounding up Christians and having them thrown in jail. Some of those Christians actually even died. So even after Saul became Paul, even after Saul was touched by the master on his road to Damascus and changed forever, people just like the story of the violin had a hard time understanding his worth, understanding the value and the change that can happen in his life because of Jesus, because of the master. So it's not that surprising that today we still struggle with the same thing. Sometimes we meet people and we knew them before they got saved. So it's hard for us to believe or see the changes that can go on in somebody's life after they come to know Christ. That brings us to number two. The master can clean us up. One of the most encouraging things for me reading the Bible is looking at the life of Paul. In fact, to me, it's actually looking at Saul changing into Paul. And it ties in really well with the story of the violin because you'll see the very first thing that the master did when he came up and he started to pick up the violin was he wiped the dust off and then he tightened up the strings. You see, he didn't start playing right away. He cleaned it up first. And the encouraging thing for you and I is that Jesus can do the exact same thing with our life. And we know it because he, look at what he did with Saul turning into Paul. Paul's testimony, when he writes in 2 Corinthians, he says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He could give that testimony because he knew what it was like to leave everything behind. And he had a past and he, he talked about it, but he really focused on the end of his race. He focused on where he was going and that new creature that he was becoming. Just like the violin in the story. Yeah, it was battered. Yes, it was scarred. But in the hands of the master, it could still play beautiful music. So lesson number two is that the master can and will clean us up. Lesson number three, we all need tuning. If you've ever played a musical instrument, then you know once you string it, it's not just done good forever. Each time you get it out to play, you have to check each individual string to make sure that it's tuned correctly. And it's not just one, you know, one twist and the whole guitar's fixed. Each string has something different you have to tune. Same thing with a violin. Now, we look at our daily life and we may be perfectly in tune with the Holy Spirit on a couple of these areas, but that one, uh, it's not quite the right pitch. It's not quite in tune and it can mess up the music or the melody of an entire life. If you take a look at Paul's testimony, he talks about this. It wasn't like he met the Lord on the way to Damascus and he was perfect the rest of his life. He never had any struggles, never had any temptations. No. Paul's own words, his own testimony, talks about how he felt like he had to die daily to self. He had to push all of that stuff away every single day. He talked about being crucified with Christ. The struggle it was to lay self down so that you could be perfectly in tune with the Holy Spirit. It's not easy. But the good news is, is that the master is constantly working on each and every one of us to tighten up those areas in our life that need a little work. One of my favorite things they did with this uh, theme of the touch of the master's hand, um, this picture, it goes through and it takes the poem and it changes it a little bit, shortens it way down. But the first line says, whenever your life is out of tune and no melody soothes your soul, look to the master whose gentle touch will bless you and make you whole. 
I love that thought because without all of the strings intact in the right pitch, it's very hard to have a beautiful melody. The next part says, like an old violin with so little worth, a life may be far less than grand, but may be transformed in a moment by the touch of the master's hand. So there are a lot of different versions of this exact same story or illustration that I feel like you can tie in to your life. And if not, certainly we can look at it and it helps us understand Paul's testimony. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a couple of things, links. Like I said, I didn't sing the song, but I do encourage people. It's been redone several times. I'll stick a link to the song below. I'll stick a link to some of the artwork and poetry. Definitely uh, the original poem, which she should 100% give giving credit to this illustration, and everybody does, to the original, which was 1921 uh, Myra Welsh. So I'll put a link in the bottom for that. At BC Missions, we know how valuable time is. And so we just want to say thank you for spending a little bit of your time with us. We we'll hope that this illustration can be an encouragement for you moving forward in your life. And as always, we hope to see you again soon.